Good afternoon, Yinzers. Welcome to the Steeler Sanctuary podcast. I'm Leanne. I'm joined by Zach, Bob, Dave, and David. And we are here today to update you on where the Steelers stand so far this week and preview the upcoming Jets game uh, at Aperture Stadium this weekend. Before we get into our topics, we have some injury updates to ours where things stand right now. It's Thursday afternoon. So as far as right now, uh, we know that Nick Herbig and Corderell Patterson were again did not practice today. So it looks very unlikely that them or Frazier will be playing in the game this weekend. I think everybody pretty much expected. Uh, Demonte KZ with his ankle was a limited participant, so he's working his way back. And then on to the good news, Alex Highsmith, uh, Najee Harris, and Michael Pruitt were all full participants. It sounds like Alex Highsmith will be back for the game this weekend against uh, against the Jets, as well as Michael Pruitt, which I think is a huge bonus to the Steelers' offense considering how much the offensive line has struggled to block. He's a big blocking tight end. It was very helpful to us when we had him in. And far as interesting news goes on the injury front, Roman Wilson, who cannot seem to catch a break in the black and gold, popped up as having a hamstring and was a limited participant today. There was limited information about that this afternoon. I did see somebody reliable on Twitter, but I can't remember who it was, said it, they didn't think it was serious. So I guess we'll keep our fingers crossed that that's the case and we can start working him into the rotation. Um, but the big topic this week, we talked about it briefly the other day when we did our Good, Bad, and the Ugly show, is that Mike Tomlin indicated at his Tuesday press conference that Roman Will, I mean that Russell Wilson, Ron Wilson, was going to be taking snaps as the first team quarterback this week and opening the door for him to be the starter and quarterback against the Jets this weekend. I think the majority of the Steelers media believe that that's a lock. You know, it's just a matter of semantics to say it's not a done deal, that it sounds like Russell Wilson will definitely be the starting quarterback. So I think there's a lot to break down with that, you know, how it impacts our offense. And then, and then we'll talk later when we do the Jets preview about how we think it impacts that game. But guys, where do you stand on what you think of Fields versus Wilson? David, you want to start? Sure. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I We talked about this before, and I'll say it again. I just You're taking Russell Wilson in his first game coming off this injury that's plagued him for how long now, and you're going to stick him behind McCollum at center, Broderick Jones and and – I, I just I don't like it. You got I just he's not going to be able to to be that mobile first game, and the offense is going to be hard to get moving with a new quarterback in there, let alone lined up against this front defensive line for the Jets. I just don't think it's a good move. They're they're four and two. Justin Fields has ten touchdowns to one interception. Is this? The, I think I said it's the first time in history this has happened to a quarterback. Yeah, so in, the, just, in the Super Bowl era. You know, yeah. but then Fields today is like saying how he just, in his own opinion, doesn't think he played well enough. You know, and you're like, wow, dude, like, it's really cool to see you say this and, and to be mature about this. And, and it's refreshing, honestly. But meanwhile, I'm like, bro, you did nothing wrong. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, it's just one of them things. I just don't think it's going to go well for still. Is there any way Tomlin's just fucking with the Jets and he's not really serious about this because – I'm with Dave. It doesn't make any sense at all. The, the Jets have the fourth most sacks in the, in the league. And like you said, you've got, you know, Dan Moore and, and Broderick Jones at tackles, and you're going to start uh, semi-healthy Russell Wilson. I mean, this this doesn't make any sense to me. I, I hope this is just maybe a ruse to get the Jets guessing on who's going to be the starter. Because if Russell Wilson starting, we're in big trouble. Chase Daniel said that on the podcast that he does with Emmanuel Ocho today, that he thinks that this is, and I forget the word he used, but basically, you know, this is like optics. Do you know what I mean? And and Mike Tomlin is a master manipulator of the media and he believes there's like a two percent chance that wilson will start at quarterback he 100 percent believes it would be fields and should be fields and he thinks that this is just tomlin saying what he thinks needs to be said and behind the scenes he's saying something different i wouldn't call tomlin a master manipulator but <laughs> I'm, I'm holding out hope that this is at least somewhat of a, a, a manipulation because yeah it, it flies against all common sense. I, I don't. I don't know how you could start Russell Wilson in this game. What about you, Bob? I mean, I would say to Chase Daniel, what did you say? I mean, 
Do you not watch how Mike Tomlin operates? I mean, and, and if the reporting is to be, be believed, there are people inside of the Steeler. If you believe Albert Breer and uh, I think Aditi Kinkawala, um, Leanne, you pointed out last night in prep, Aditi Kinkawala said it's it, it's probably uh, an assistant coach or and, and some players who are saying that they don't feel like they should make the change. And I, I don't get it. And it, And the only reason they're going to do this, and I know we're going to talk about this in a little while, the only reason they're doing this, if if it happens, is because Tomlin feels some sort of way that he's got to give Russell Wilson a chance. And I've heard all the arguments again today, and, and it, I, it was driving me up the wall listening to some of the people calling in. Oh, Russell Wilson, he won a Super Bowl 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Oh, Russell Wilson, he's a much better passer. Well, Steve Palazzolo was on the PM team saying, hey, if you're if you're banking on 26 and eight, like that's some kind of, you know, achievement last year, trust me, it's not. And Palazzolo was with PFF. He's with the 33rd team. Now there, Mark Schlereth killed Russell Wilson again today. Well, I, I don't see this change. I mean, I, I get the idea of, well, if the, when Wilson play actions, he's better turning his back to the line of scrimmage and you have to respect him throwing the ball. Yeah, you would, theoretically, if he wasn't going to get killed the second he turns his back to that offensive line. Even Arthur Smith kind of hinted that he wanted – he thought Justin Fields could keep starting today. He kind of – He did. So the, the kid's trying hard, and we're winning, and winning's the most important thing. And Well, that's come up this week. You've heard people say that they believe Mike Tomlin talks out of both sides of his mouth. And Dee said it last night when she made the comment about the – players and coaches she said that you know he says winning's the most important thing he's always says she said i'll paraphrase he always says letters matter more than numbers meaning wins matter more than the score but when you're switching out the player that's bringing you the wins then what are you really valuing right. what about you zach well uh, actually uh uh, this is going to be the episode where Zach brings out obscure stats because it has <laughs> happened before and it has <laughs> happened in Pittsburgh in 1974 uh, Joe Gillum was 4-1-1 one, and one. And he was benched. And the reason he was benched at that point, a lot of people said he liked to call his own plays. Uh, he liked to kind of go against what Chuck Knoll said. But the overarching opinion at that point is people in Pittsburgh weren't that comfortable with a black starting quarterback at that time. And Joe Gillum was and Terry Bradshaw wasn't. And I so it kind of went that direction. Sure. So it it has happened before. Now, uh, I, the, the reasons for him being in there, I forget the exact thing. It was either a, an injury to Bradshaw or it was a strike or something. There was extenuating a circumstance that led to Gilliam being in that starting position. But there is precedent in Pittsburgh for us saying a quarterback that's winning isn't winning in the way we like him to be winning. So we want someone else there instead. So I, I don't like it at all. I, there is precedence for it for some reason. But this is going – I want Russell Wilson – to be better than he is right now because I want him to look at the tape. I want him to look at the offensive line. I want him to look at the offensive running and say, you know what? I know I want to be in there, but if I'm the team player, I've always said I am. If I'm the rah-rah guy, if I'm the everyone matters and I'm not just about me, this is where you prove it. This is where you tell the coaches, I shouldn't be in for this. I'm going to get hurt. Someone's going to get hurt. It's not going to happen. He's too much of a competitor. Yeah, There's money no on the way. line. It's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But it should be what happens with the kind of person Russell Wilson makes himself out to be. This is where you prove it's not just fate. And so this is where I think that that damn breaks where it is all fate. And and football and the money and all that and being out there matters more than the team winning. So I'm, I'm going to end up being disappointed in Russell Wilson and the Steelers when we try to go back to Justin Fields. And it's not as easy a transition back as we thought it was going to be. Well, let, let me just jump in real quick and let's let's be fair to Chuck Noll here. Number one, Chuck Knowles quarterbacks in the 70s all called their own plays. Bradshaw, yeah. Gilliam, that True. was a staple of Chuck Knowles' oh, uh, offense. Look, look, that wasn't look, because he him. was calling his own plays. Oh, no, let me specify. It wasn't his own plays. He directly went when Chuck Knoll would tell him a play. He said, I'm not calling that. Here's what I want to do. It was it, it was apparently a direct. It wasn't a call. That's a good way to get play. benched. It was what you're doing is wrong. What I'm doing is right. <laughs> now, I'm basing this off what I read. It, and I am catching up to this quick. I only learned about this like two or three days ago. So I've been catching up. But I, I, I know there was some friction. That Can't was blast. beyond the yeah. normal audibles. Yeah. 
All right, let's jump out of the 70s and back into 2024 <laughs> and go back to our current current dilemma. And let's just kind of open it up and talk about this. I want to talk a little bit about the impact of what this means. Let's say, let's set aside what Justin Fields has done. Let's talk a little bit about Russell Wilson, if he really does play this week and what the impact means, not just specifically about the Jets, but in general. We all heard Dan Moore made some comments, you know, that sounded a lot like, boy, it's really helped to have Justin Fields legs out there, you know, kind of bailing this out. I know that Najee Harris made some comments today, uh, but Mark Caballi made a comment that he believes that Najee Harris will actually run better with Russell Wilson as the quarterback than he does with Justin Fields because been putting eight man up, eight men up in the box and it's been making it hard for him to get out and run. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think, and let's just kind of open it up and talk about it, about what is this impact? What What is this, that, good or bad, that we think Russell brings to the table? Able if he comes in as a starting quarterback. I think people I think are over, that uh, re really over exaggerating how much defenses are going to respect Russell Wilson's arm. Yeah, exactly. I think I, don't think, I think everyone right is uh, and um, right, right off the bat, Justin Fields this year is throwing faster than Russell Wilson was last year. So if last year, if they were all all a goggle about how Justin Fields was able to get the ball, he's, he's doing it faster. So uh, all the things you want from Russell Wilson, Justin Fields is already doing. So the, when we go in, I don't believe what Marco Boli says because I think that Najee's in right now. They know Najee is going to run, but no one's going to respect Russell Wilson as much as the media is right now. We're not going to go into the Jets going to say Wilson's in. Everybody be careful. It they might have to respect it a little more, but it's not going to change it to that extent. That's that's a mass mass media exaggeration. I think the hope is is that Russell Wilson's more accurate with his throws. And he sees the field better than Fields has. You can't and deny that, Fields was missing guys. Yeah, right. definitely missing. And, guys, I, sure. and I think Agreed. if that improves the passing game, that's what's going to help Najee. And I think that's the hope. And that's what either Tomlin's betting on, or Arthur Smith, or you know, Kaboli. Like I think that's that's basically what they're hoping happens is that the passing game does actually improve under Wilson. Therefore, will help the run game. We'll see. I think this helps Warren more than it helps Najee Harris because Russell Wilson's the check down king. He yeah. checked down. Yeah. He led the league in check downs last year. Yep. And if you're going to pick a running back that's going to benefit from that more, it's it's Jalen Warren. He's much better in the open True. field. He's much better receiver. This doesn't help Najee at all. I I agree with Zach. This no one's going to respect Russell Wilson off the bat. I mean, it, he's got to prove that before we start seeing lighter boxes and everything else. Um, you know, he goes out there and tortures the Jets, then maybe in the subsequent weeks we'll see it but right off the bat no this doesn't help Najee it's it's no different yeah I, I don't I don't get it I mean as far as Kaboli what the fucking fuck I mean I want to understand how bad our receivers are we have the worst receivers at on an opinion it's a stat that's out there is it a great stat no and I way they computed i mean who knows they probably just roll you know dragon pick it up. but that said we have a separation issue now i think we have good tight ends and i think is going to succeed it's got to be to the tight ends it's got to be that i'm going to get it off quick to pat darnell washington and mccall pruitt is a big deal Okay, in the Arthur Smith offense, he was very effective in Atlanta. He was very effective in Tennessee. I like having him back. He's a yeah. smaller tight end than you think he is, though. He's only 6'2". He blocks his ass off, though. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good blocker, but he's a better receiver. Than, and, and in Tennessee, they always wondered, well, you know, why is it that this guy all of a sudden has these huge games? It wasn't every game. It wasn't consistent. But if Wilson can find him on these little play actions, he's a better receiver than Connor Hayward. He's a better blocker than Connor Hayward. Hayward can go back to playing fullback instead of the third tight end. So I think there can be success with the tight ends. And if we're going to win this game, and I do think we're going to win the game, it's going to be because the tight ends can exploit the Jets. I I don't know that Pickens is going to – I think it's a wash with him and Sauce Gardner. Calvin Austin running open. I don't think they're going to have time to find Calvin Austin. I think it's got to be short, quick throws to the tight ends and to Jalen. And kind of what I thought we were going to do in the Colts game, 
I think there's a chance with Russell Wilson we do that in this game. But that being said, not only does he throw the most checkdowns in the league, but go back the last couple of years. Go back to last year. You know who held the ball longest before he threw it? Russell Wilson. So you lead the league in checkdowns and you hold the ball forever. Boy, that doesn't sound like it's going to be a very good combination. But then again, Justin Fields was second to last last year. Yeah. So that's do you our guys, do, do you guys envision any universe where they use both quarterbacks? You know, whether it's, yes. I don't know, whether they're going to go back and forth or bring Justin Fields in on special like slash packages. How do you think that'll work? What do you think, I, David? I, I do. I mean, Tomlin's already kind of speculated that that might be an option. Uh, you know, and then I kind of speculate the whole thing with Deshaun Elliott putting that stuff on Instagram, like, oh, man, Tomlin's got some tricks up his sleeve for this game. Uh, so I, that's what I actually took from that whole thing at first. So I'm hoping, yes, they bring him in for some wildcat packages. I'm hoping it is the uh, – Arthur Smith offense where you get Mariota and you get uh, Tannehill where you get that whole, oh, they're bringing in mm. Justin. You know they're going to do some kind of run play, but it's kind of hard to stop because Justin's really fucking good at running the ball. So I do. I do think that is something they're going to do. They're going to utilize. I think that's, in some weird ways, another reason why they went and got fields after already having Wilson was the fact they could use that dynamic. Because, no joke, Arthur Smith is the guy they brought in, so that would yeah. make sense, right? So, yeah, I, I think they are. I think this is something they're going to employ. And maybe that could be why Justin Fields is not being so pouty and, and being immature about the whole thing, even though he deserves to be by, by all means. But I wonder if he knows he's still going to get something out of this game for himself, and that's why it's like this right now. Well, let me ask you a question. So let's say they go two quarterbacks, okay? And I'm playing outside linebacker, and you're going to sit Fields – and Wilson next to each other. Wilson's going to RPO. Are you doing anything but going full speed at Russell Wilson? No. All the more reason to have Justin Fields on the field, right? He's he's probably the best athlete on the team. Correct. Have yeah. him on the field as a wide receiver, as another back, as a distraction to the Jets. Yeah. It's what saved us in Vegas. I mean, there's no dispute in it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not taking yeah. away from, you know, other people's excellent performances, you know, in the defense and Najee Harris and whatever else. But I mean, let's be honest, the offense did what they did because Justin Fields was picking up yards that we would have left behind with a less mobile quarterback. Now, Dave, yeah. we talked about before my, my big problem with this is I think it comes down to respect. I don't think any end of the deep, when the defense comes in, anyone's going to look at D Justin Fields and think that anything else is going to happen with what we're using him. I think if we use, if we prove that Russell Wilson can still throw the football, we can kind of function as an offense, maybe against the Giants, we bring it out more. I think we do it here. It, it's not going to be as effective as we think. And we're going to get upset about but it. But they can't if catch we, him. It doesn't matter if they know. They couldn't stop him before. I predict, yeah. I predict if we get down to the five yard line, they're going to bring Justin Fields out there. And yeah. because guess I, what I, he's I, been I, doing? I, guess what he's been doing like five that. yards out a lot. Yeah, that's what I see what happened. I, I look, like I watched the Titans do it with Mariota. Tannehill would get yeah. down to the five yard line, maybe ten, and they would go, Oh, guess what you're about to face Mariota. And guess what happened? They would fucking score because you didn't know whether or not he was gonna throw it or run the ball. You would think he was gonna run it, but every once in a blue moon, he would throw oh. it and it would fuck defenses up. And that's why I'm okay with this. If this is the game yeah. plan. Do what you got to do. Just win this fucking game. And if that's and if that's what your plan no. is, fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, In all fairness, yeah, though, uh, everyone was terrified of, of uh, Derrick Henry, and that's why that all worked. I mean, yeah. we, uh, Najee Harris is good, but he's not Derrick Henry. I mean, I don't know. But, but we got I'm for Jalen Warren being on the back, field. too. We got both guys yep. back now to make yeah. that more uh, of a threat. You can just you say what you want about Najee, but now that we got Warren back paired with him together – so let's talk about the big reason about why all this is happening. Why is this happening? Do you know what I mean? I think we've all heard the speculations that, you know, look, it was never Justin Fields' job to begin with. He was always the backup. This was always Russell Wilson's job. You know, just like, you know, he's like Duck Hodges in this situation to Ben Roethlisberger, you know, or, or Mike Tomlin, you know, feels like he has an obligation to start him. And, and the big question is, is it is this really all about Mike Tomlin's ego? 
And uh, why exactly are we considering this? Why are why is this such a big deal when we're winning? We're four and two. Why are we working on making a quarterback change if we make a quarterback change? What do you guys think? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend Mike Tomlin here. I don't and yeah, I don't please. do this often, but you're gonna defend Mike Tomlin, e- Mark. Ah. I don't think it's ego. I I think there are there are receivers out there that are open that that Justin Fields is missing, and I think they think. Russell Wilson gives them a better chance to hit those receivers. I mean, we all agree that yeah. with, the, with the way this offensive line is, that's probably a fantasy and and not going to happen. <laughs> but that's true too. <laughs> I just think Mike Tomlin sees what we see when he looks at the tape. Wide receivers that are open at times, they're not great. <laughs> don't I mean, get it twisted. Scaffold, I don't think scaffold off of what you say because I think that you're right, and I think that to layer onto that, I don't think he feels obligated to Russell Wilson, but I think he feels like, damn, if I don't at least look at this, I might regret not looking. Do you know what I mean? So like what happens if we don't make it to playoffs, we don't win. And then I haven't even explored this option and, you know, he's there and now we don't have him anymore or something. So I, I feel like maybe there's a part of it that that's that too. The other part I of think, it is though, they are winning. So why change now? And I, I, think I, I do both sides of it, but I, they must I, not believe that Justin Fields is going to get any better. They I, must think, I this think is it. it's all about having that seasoned veteran QB who's seen it all. That's what this is about. He gets his seasoned veteran that's a Super Bowl winning quarterback who's been around a long time in the league. Who he, he thinks we're it's this is you know like you like you said, Bob, the Obama administration era, yeah. Russell Wilson, and I, I think he thinks he can get some you know fraction of that that will, will make a difference more than what Fields can do. He's probably wrong, but let's hope he's right. Like he's missing Ben? Yes. No. That's a, Ooh. that is like a, an amazing analogy. Wow. Yeah. Yes. You just hit that on the nail. Wow. Good point. Yeah. That like, I don't know if he misses Ben at all. Okay. Though. Oh, okay. Let, let me interject. Yeah. Let me interject one thing then. Ben won a Super Bowl 15 years ago. Would you rather start Ben this weekend or Russell Wilson? Hmm. Has Ben about, like, retired and been on his house for two years, three years? Yeah, you can't, you can't stop Ben now. I yeah. mean, he's yeah, been but, gone too long. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, he. I think he thinks that, I mean, just that was a great way to use that, Leanne, is that I think he thinks he's getting maybe Ben towards the end of when he was still really good Yeah. with Russell Wilson. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what he's hoping he's getting. Because when Ben was 36, right, 35, 36, he was still decently good, uh, right? 2017, yeah. 2018. That, that those were, th- those were big yeah. years. Those were, I, 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 I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to. I don't. I can't remember Ben's age at, at the time frame. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm on. Yeah, this, I don't think he's. I, yeah, he's not I'm, getting. I'm not I saying, feel like Ben Roethlisberger was 36 when he blew out his Tomlin helmet. Thinks that. So, I just there's something there where where he wants his seasoned, experienced mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. And, and and Russell Wilson's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. It's everything that Tomlin wants. That's what he had years ago with Ben, and he thinks he has it again. And, and I think he really had it his whole career in Pittsburgh. Do you know what Correct. I mean? Because Ben wasn't a rookie with him, so he really yeah. did get you know the team given to him with his quarterback that was strong and managed things. And right. you know he didn't he was have handed to a franchise quarterback to start his career. I mean, yeah, not most coaches. New coaches usually don't get that. Yeah, most new coaches come in and it's you've got to rebuild because they fired the other guy and you got to fix this. Right. That didn't happen. They had they had a Hall of Fame coach say, hey, I'm done in cower. So he got handed the keys to a Super Bowl built team already. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so I, I think that this is something he thinks that he might have again. Uh, that's why I think it is. So, so, this plays into my 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 season long journey about truly wanting to believe that the people in charge at the Steelers organization know more than I do. Because I have two choices here. I can either believe that after a win that we needed that got a lot of monkeys off our back, that kind of proved about a little more identity that this team has, that everyone in the Steelers sat down and said, you know what, let's blow this the fuck up. You know how this is all going well? Let's, 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 let's make sure none of this goes well. I have that option. Which includes the the oh the the Mike Tomlin's ego is controlling everything, which it definitely has some part of it. I am not discounting that at all. But or I can choose that something bigger than me is going on. 
something that I don't understand intrinsically about football is happening right now that I need to trust. And I prefer that reality. Even if it's a little bit of denial at the moment, I like that reality because the other one just sets me up for a bad season and my heart can't take it. So you're saying in Tomlin we trust, basically. No, no, I, I'm saying in the Steeler organization as a whole, we trust. I, I, it, I, I that's I, I really well, but in Tomlin we trust. Tomlin we trust. I will be 100% show, honest. Yeah. I was but, say, well, that, that's why Zach, I, that, I've got some I'm, news for you. Right. Yeah, the head coach <laughs> actually runs the that football dude's team. That running the show, bro. <laughs> this is so uncommon. Like, in, in, right? in the reality I'm hoping for, while that is very, very much true, there are smart parts of it that are being taken out of his hands because – if I truly believe if Mike Tomlin was fully in charge of it, all of the plays that I've – not the toss plays, but I've seen plays one runs by Arthur Smith did not work. I have not seen them run again. That did not happen last season. There are things that are different foundationally that might be small, but show me that there is a difference. So I, I can give you – Zach, I can give you an example thing, right now. Why are we still running halfback toss? I'm Bob. I'm saying there are many. I'm saying I'm small things, not not everything. There are small things that are showing me that while most things are in Mike Tomlin's hands, some things are being taken out. Because yet again, my other option is to kind of sit and wallow after every game, and I don't really feel like going into a game like that. I have to believe it's going somewhere. I else. thought it would be more Tomlin like to stick with Justin Fields, exactly. even if he was stinking and we were losing, and you're going to turn a blind eye to it and pretend you can't hear the media and, you know, just stand by your man. I mean, that was kind of would have been more what I would expect. So actually, I think that making the change is a little bit unusual. Leanne, you yeah. saying, Ben, it just, it really puts things in perspective for me because. I think about when Tomlin did win a Super Bowl, right? And then yeah. went to another one. It was hell of a quarterback, hell of a defense. And I think he envisions that same exact thing. Like rethinking the magic. Yes. Thinks he, but that's the problem we say with Tomlin, right? Is that that's why some of us argue the time has passed him by. He is still living in that era of tough defense. And it's like, dude, that's not how it is nowadays. Yeah. But I think but I think that may, might be why he's doing what he's doing is that he feels he's got a Super Bowl winning quarterback with, with a year or two left in him still with a top ranked defense, right? Is it different though I, than what the Jets are doing? I mean, isn't that what they're doing with Rodgers? I, and I can't argue that. Yes. I know. Wait, now they went and got Devontae Adams to play yes. with Garrett Wilson. So that don't hurt. Plus Lazard well, and Brees Hall and all that whole right. you know, crew. But uh, put, I just, yeah. man. Something there, it, there's, it makes me think now more that you mentioned, Ben, that, that that might be what he's going for. Russell Wilson was the guy who played, you know, decent quarterback with a really good defense. And I think Tomlin is enamored. I mean, look, don't get it twisted because I've advanced the narrative that I think Tomlin has lost some power behind the scenes in the draft process. Mike Tomlin has lost zero power on the football field. Whatever goes on on game day, it's Mike Tomlin's call. And don't believe anything else because Mike Tomlin is running the show there. He Maybe the draft picks are different, but for now, Mike Tomlin's running the show on the field. And you're right. I agree. This is very suspect. I don't understand why you would, you would make the change when you're winning. You know, he, even last year with Mason, and not that Mason was great, but he we were winning. It was playing pretty good. Why upset the apple cart when you're trying yeah, exactly. to make the playoffs? Exactly. I, I, I'm surprised by this. But then again, looking at it, you know, you could say you look at the tape and you see open receivers. Yeah, I get it. But you also see Fields running for his life on the same play. Uh, Russell Wilson's had a lot of comeback wins in his career, too. Who's that, was that a also long time relative ago. to? A long yeah, time ago. Yeah, but who's that relative to? Ben. Ben's got a lot of comeback games, too. So. Remember the stipulation of that six round pick turning to a fourth is fifty one percent for Justin Fields. Yeah, I don't think Tomlin so, gives a shit about that, dude. Hey, I really dude, don't. I am telling you, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't give a flying fuck whether it's Kevin Colbert or not. They covet those picks. A sixth to a fourth is a big deal. So yeah, I could see them doing but over this. winning games yeah you don't you don't only bet your quarterback because, because only because of the fact of some of the issues there are with justin fields that they feel they could do better with russell wilson on top of the fact they get to keep that to a to a six round pick 
That's why. I'm not trying to say that's the only, the whole reason. I'm just trying to say that may help. And I speculated right. this at the beginning of the season that that could be the reason why they're so hardcore about Russell Wilson is they want to make sure it's a six for Justin Fields and not a four. I, I'm look, still not convinced this is going to happen at all. It's a part of the reason. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the whole reason. But hey, guys, now you've given me hope, we are all We're all sitting there <laughs> going, why in the world would they do this? Well, that's a great question. But having a fourth – Instead of giving up, you know, giving up a six instead of giving up a fourth, that's not for the Steelers. That's a big deal. That flies yeah. in the face of everything Tomlin stands for, Dave. He, all he cares about is winning. He doesn't care about draft picks. He doesn't care about yeah. anything. Then why is all he, he cares doing about it is winning? Then why is he you know, doing I, it then? I, I, the only thing that makes sense to me is he's not going to do it. That he's just screwing around with the, the, the Jets, giving him something else to think about. Everything we go over makes great. this doesn't make any sense. I hope at all. to hell we're filling in the Dave told you so episode come Monday. I swear to God, I am. I, I mean, let me ask we'll you this though. If, let me ask you this though. If he if it does turn out he's screwing with everybody, and he starts Fields, what does Russell Wilson do? Does oh, he Wilson is he to gonna? Does he stand Otherwise, up at the work. press conference like Justin Fields and go, "Oh man, I didn't play good enough to keep my job." Which I I, I saw some people that you know give him credit for being humble and all that. And yeah, it, you know, you went out at the press conference and you said all the right things compared to what Kenny Pickett said. Um, but that yeah, being okay. said, you're about to be a free agent and sign probably a 30 to $50 million contract. You ain't getting out there and saying, well, these guys are idiots. Who, Justin Fields? Yeah. Not if he's I on think, the bench the rest of the season. Oh, I guarantee you right now, if I'm Carolina, I'm, I'm opening up the checkbook. $100 million, three years, you can have yeah, it. But, but here's the other no, thing, no. too, Bob, is that by benching him, that lowers his, his, that lowers his ask price. I don't, I don't think so. Hey, they're so they're so desperate for quarterbacks. Look at you know, look at some of the guys who get have getting signed to big contracts. They are going to look at it and say, "Hey, he was pretty good. He was four and two, had a career high completion percentage. The Steelers were winning." And if they keep him out the rest of the season, let's say the Steelers miss the playoffs, I mean, they're going to go, yeah. "Hey, that was a I mean, huge mistake." Yeah. I get what you're and saying. And he's only 25. Yes, yeah. but 25. they're in point. They've actually done him a favor by taking him out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. You're, I, I get what you're saying. I do. It's just that they're in the bottom tier in passing. They're in the bottom tier in scoring points. Teams, when they're negotiating, they can look at these things and go, well, you did technically get benched. And two, you didn't put up a lot of points. And three, you didn't put up a lot of passing yards. They will look at all this in negotiations. Yeah. When you're going to yeah. hand a guy 30 or 50 million dollars, they just gave Dak Prescott 60 million dollars. You don't think Justin okay. Fields is going to fetch 30, 40, up, 50 on the open up market? The Cowboys in passing, in scoring, and that compared to Fields. There's a difference. Don't get me wrong. Prescott, he he is he chokes in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to make him out to be this great quarterback. I'm just saying, like, when it comes to production. And finding ways to lower that asking price. All this is a game. It's all a game. And, and I can see the Steelers wanting to play that game. I talked about this beginning of the season about how they need to hope that Fields they win with them, but he doesn't put up gaudy numbers because it lowers the asking price. And now that they benched him, that helps even more. And by the way, they only give up a six for him instead of a four. All this stuff adds up to all these different reasons why maybe that's why they're fucking doing this. Or Tomlin's a genius and is just fooling with the Jets. Let me ask you a question, you guys. I heard somebody say this yesterday, and it really got me thinking. Are we looking at all of this stuff in this particular way because we're wearing our, like, Kenny Pickett goggles? So we're, like, swooning over what we see from Justin Fields because, and you know, in the attitude and the how mature he seems and – the scrambling and picking up yards and all of those things that, you know, we, we look so bad under picket that now we're okay. Taking like mediocre. Well, I don't know if we could have hoped for much more than mediocre when we signed these two quarterbacks. I mean, this is, this is what you get. I mean, neither one of them signed mediocre quarterbacks. See, here's my thing. They tried to take the quick way out, the easy way out, not draft somebody, not trade for somebody. I think we've got better than mediocre from Justin. I agree, I think, but I think you need to get that out of him, and I don't know how you're getting that out of him on the bench. I don't think it's that for me. Anything that has to do with Kenny Pickett, I threw it in the trash. Um, so no goggles over here. Um, I just I just think that, that he is – I think he's done better than that. I think he's yeah. better than Kenny and them, but he's not like being – I'm not going to put him in elite. 
I'm not going to yeah. put him as great. I'm just going to say he's been good, if that uh, makes sense. I, I, let me throw a couple names at you. This feels better than Daniel Jones. It depends. As a passer, probably not. I mean, he's got As one. Said, on he's going to quarterback your team. He, he, you know, on the Steelers' offense, no, I would no. I would, yeah. I'll, take I'll take Justin I Fields. Take, yeah, I'll take Fields. Yeah, I take Fields. Okay, Dane feels Dimes better than doesn't. Deshaun Watson. Yes. Oh God, yeah. Well, on every the high, offense, the high school quarterback's better than Deshaun Watson. I'm better than him. Yes. Fields better than Trevor Lawrence. Ooh, at, at this point, this season, probably. Yes. Right now, yeah. this, yes. this season, yes. Probably. Just okay, well, put that. Well, just to just to give you an example, those three quarterbacks I just named are gonna are making forty million, forty yeah. million, and fifty five million dollars right. per year. But yeah. there was also like promised potential there when they were signed, and I mean that's the risk you take. We could sign Justin Fields right now in the middle of the season for the first time in Steelers history to some giant ass contract, you know, right. for us a giant contract, and then he comes back next year. We get this production from him. We win a playoff game, and then he comes back next year and goes all Daniel Jones on us. I mean, yeah. that's the risk you take. Look at Deshaun Watson. I mean, look. <laughs> We, we all make fun of it, but when the Browns signed him, there was real thought that there could be potential there and they would have this really dangerous weapon, you know, given what we've seen in Houston. And so, you know, now I don't, he's broken. I, I'll tell you what though, Bob, a good measurement for, for what you're trying to say would be Danny Dimes because yeah, he had his best season his last year before he got the new contract. Right. Yeah. So what you do is look at that year and look at what he did and then compare that to what Fields is doing now. Now, the season's not over yet, but you could average it out. Yeah. And then that gives you an idea of what right now Fields could garner. But that'd be the way I would compare it. I wouldn't compare it to Deshaun Watson. I wouldn't compare it to Trevor Lawrence because, like Leanne said, that was unexpected results they thought they would get from both of them. Day Dimes, that was what he did that last year, which is yeah, kind of like what we're going to do with Fields. What's he going to do this one year with us? Yeah. So, so I think 20, that's a great that's a great example to go off of. Um, right. So in 2022, but, his, his con, the year he played yeah. for the contract, yeah, he threw for 3,200 yards. Okay. 15 touchdowns, five interceptions, and let's see what his rushing stats were. Um, he might not had much, really, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a better runner than you think, though. He ran, oh, yeah. he, he, he I, ran for 472 yards. Did he really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he runs a little bit. The, the Giants the Giants were just – well, I, the Giants drafted him high. And yeah. a lot of people were killing him for that draft pick. Yeah. So they kind of had to justify that draft pick by him. signing him. Yeah. And all three of those teams that you mentioned, if you ask them, they regret very much signing those contracts. But I, yeah. but I do get I mean, what that's you're a saying lesson for the rest of the league. As far as talking about value and what quarterbacks to get nowadays, I won't argue the fact that they're giving out tons of money. Yes. I just think that if the Steelers can somehow get lucky and, and those numbers get a little suppressed, <laughs> it helps yeah. them. It is my thing. But you no, could I get, be right. I, I, I get what you're could still be 30, 40 million. You could be right. I get where you're going, but these guys, let's face it, no matter how well they do, unless they do really bad and and yeah. Well, Fields has not. So if he's benched now for the rest of the year, Fields Fields has got a good argument in free agency. Now let's say Russell Wilson plays pretty good for these last 10, 11 games. The top two free agent quarterbacks are Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Yeah. Everybody is going to everybody's going to go after him. Everybody, well, everybody who needs a quarterback is going to go after him. Fields has a lot more to gain. I, I, uh, yes. Russell Wilson has a lot more to gain, I think, because he's got that resume. And if he can show, he can put it together for the rest yeah. of the season. He, he, he's going to yeah, yes he'll, he'll no. definitely. I mean, Fields is younger, so I could also see that route helping him too. Yeah, yeah I, I, just, I totally agree. If Fields just, can show that, I think that'll it really just, help It just him. depends. Either way, if they both do well, in a weird way, it's bad for the Steelers when it, after this season. Oh yeah, yeah. For the contract wise, so, okay. let's we're gonna run out of time today, and I want to make yeah. sure we get to all of this. So let's switch to another really highly paid position and coveted position right now in the NFL, and one the Steelers don't have the luxury of coveting, and that's the wide receiver position. So we obviously we didn't get Brandon Ayuk, we didn't get Devontae Adams, and now we're talking about who's left. Jeremy Fowler said yesterday the Steelers are next in line. So I didn't realize we were waiting at Kmart for our wide receiver but i guess we were so we talked a little bit about who's left we pulled some names together yesterday adam thielen mike williams julio jones hunter renfro cooper cup anyone else 
what do you guys think? Do you think there's a, a wide receiver out there the Steelers are legitimately targeting? Is there somebody that makes sense? Is there somebody who doesn't make sense? I hate Mike Williams as a pick for us at this point in his career. Agreed. I, Mike Williams hasn't done shit really the last. He's got like years. a grant, like my back, like my grandfather. Correct. Like he has so many back all injuries. The time. Yeah. yeah. He's an 80% uh, injury Thielen. risk for this season. 80%. That's huge. brought me on to, to I, being interested in Thielen. Like, I, I didn't really yeah. – I thought this guy was was done. I thought he was washed. But then when Bob brought him up, I went and looked, you know, and then he brought up his stats for last season. I was like, holy shit, he had 1,000 yards with Bryce Young thrown to him? And so, 100 catches. Yeah, and 100 yeah. catches. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I, so, for, I, for I, I kind of feel like a – Beg- beggars can't be choosers is what I kind of how I feel right now. There's certain guys. <laughs> yeah, we, don't need, we don't need any more bodies. We're not just like looking for a body to put out there. Right. We've got bodies. That oh, are yeah. We need somebody yeah. to I'll, I'll, sp- I'll specify, to- but okay. we can't, we, 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 there's a certain tier that we yeah. do. I, I don't want the bodies anymore because we've tried that. And I legitimately tried to throw my faith behind it. Like, Hey, maybe someone will remember. And it did. So we need someone in that upper tier, but I legitimately don't care who it is in there. There's just, there's a name that we'll see that will be like, Oh, okay. That guy might be. And no one's, no one's been that yet. So. Adam Thielen is that for me right now. Like I think, you know, with what's left, I think he makes a lot of sense. Do you know what I mean? I think I agree with Didi talked about it last night. He's, he's this like no nonsense, no drama guy. Do you know what I mean? So maybe he does come into Pittsburgh and he can help mentor Pickens that last little bit that he kind of needs help or whatever. And, and, and just be that guy that's, you know, he's available, he's reliable, he's steady. I mean, yep. he's, you know, he's not lighting the world on fire, but he's, he's a solid too. Right. I think yeah. Thielen's the best you can possibly ask for at this point. I don't think if any other wide receiver shakes out, I've said this a thousand times. I tweeted it out today. I did a post about it. Any wide receiver worth his salt is not going to come to Pittsburgh. It's just that simple. Why would you put yourself in this situation with a quarterback controversy brewing with a, a coach who's risk adverse on offense as much as you possibly can? Um, I looked it up today. The Steelers only have one wide receiver in the top 100 in targets. They don't throw the oh ball. Why would you come here? It, it boggles my mind. And every wide receiver knows it. Every wide receiver sees Deontay Johnson for a bad Carolina team doing well. Every wide receiver sees George Pickens, one of the best one young wide receivers in the league, struggling to get targets, not getting the yeah. ball. No one's going to come here. If another one, another wide receiver gets unhappy between now and the trade deadline, and they're good, they're not even. They're not is there some chicken in the egg to that too, though? That I mean, like you know, not all of it is just that we don't throw the ball, but that you know, there's a lack of effectiveness. You know what I mean? Whether it's Justin yep. Fields not being so effective, or you know, they double team George Pickens and there's no other option there, so then you have to throw it away or field yep. scrambles or whatever. The offensive line is terrible. We're still the worst team at getting wide receiver separation, right? That hasn't changed as far as I know. No. Yeah, and I, I, talent, But he needs somebody else there. I don't know. I think we need somebody who says, you know, maybe like a Thielen who's like, look, I'm nearing the end of my career. I want to play one more year. My wife would like a million dollars to redecorate the living room or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, so I'll, I'll come to Pittsburgh because – who doesn't want to play for Mike Tomlin? Supposedly everybody wants to, you know, so I'll come, come to Pittsburgh and finish out my career here for a year or two. And I think yeah. if the, if Thielen does come, that might throw a little bit of a wrench into the, you know, uh, Mike Tomlin might not be the same player as coach he was. Cause that means Deontay, despite the fact he left, must have told Thielen positive things that said, Hey, listen, Pittsburgh's a place you'll want to go. Did you all see the, uh, and then to me, to me, that's how I see it. Did you guys see the tweet about um, that suggested Cooper Cup for a third? And no. um, oh, who was the player? Uh, Beanie Bishop. Beanie Bishop. Yeah. yeah. I will I would, drive Bishop to the yeah. airport. I was going to say that. I was going to say, I'll just give him Bishop. Oh, you'll take him? No problem. <laughs> just just to, as a change up, I'm going to be a little contrarian here. Um, what a shock. How is this, <laughs> how is this different? Cooper, Cooper Cup, 2022, 2023, 2024. 24 has played 23 games yeah yeah he's been definitely hurt it's 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 a roll of dice but that's why you get him for only a third yeah right 
That and too. I would that, literally wear my West Virginia jersey while driving Beanie Bishop to the airport. <laughs> what, 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 what wide receiver outside of maybe Justin Jefferson would fetch a first? Probably yeah, none. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's, there's more than one, right? but you're, I get your point. I mean, it's probably like, 10 in general or if they're available. I, I thinking about the wide receiver trades over the last couple of years with, with the big guys, they're second, seconds, thirds. I mean, yeah. mostly thirds. I know what you're saying. It's, it's, Devontae Adams, they got a, the Raiders gave up a first for him, though, didn't they? I mean, they're idiots, but still. Yeah, they don't, the Raiders. No, I think the Raiders oh, signed yeah, him as a free agent. All, no, he got traded from Green Bay to the Raiders. Yeah, and I think they gave up a lot for him, too. I, they did. I, I believe they gave Dave's up right. A first, they did. And, a first and a third, know. maybe? Yeah, a first like and a third or, or yeah. something. But either but way, you, your I point is right. Because right, though, lately, you got to sign right. these guys. There you know, hasn't that's been the that many yeah. first round picks given up for wide receivers because there's so many in the draft you can get. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, honestly, I mean, look at, the, look at the Steelers. They've been a wide receiver factory. Now, oh. have they turned out great? Like, not you know, right. Not recently. Being here long term? No. But if we keep hitting on them like we do, yeah. Well, I let me ask I mean, you a question though. What, 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 what wide receiver me. have we hit on since Ben retired? George Pickens. Pickens yeah. is about it. Maybe. Did we? I love George Pickens, but did we? I, if you ask, I, I, I bet yeah. you the majority of Steeler fans right now would say we missed. Because the majority no, of Steelers I, are assholes. No, he's yeah, a second round pick. They have other issues with him that have nothing to do with with his his game. Talent wise, game. he's a hit. Yeah. Talent wise, he's yeah. Yeah. Now let's think the about this. There. How many had been first round picks that we gave up or we used on a wide receiver? Yeah, that's a that's another thing we should factor in this is the fact that we haven't had to give up a first round to get right. these guys. Now, mind right. you, now some of it's been because they're problem childs. Like I, I recognize that. But at the same time, we do hit on wide receivers pretty well. We More used to. I don't even know. I don't know if this is a change of philosophy, though. Omar Khan's only drafted one in his two drafts, and it was in the third round. Um, and he can't get on the field. Yeah. And yeah, he can't stay healthy. But that's not really, Yeah. I mean, we could argue injuries if you want, but I'm just saying in talent level wise, we, even, we got even we still. the guy was talented. Like we didn't miss right. on the pick itself as far as giving it up for talent. Yeah, but don't discount the fact that Wilson's been healthy for the last three weeks. Yeah. He's not though. He's got a. Well, no, now, he yeah. has been a healthy he's scratch. Now he's got a hamstring. The right. Yeah. Now I mean, he's hurt. I just, yeah. in general, they do very well drafting wide receivers. Getting back to my point, they're not going to give up a first round pick for a wide receiver in a trade. I, I agree. Right. And I think at most, and I think that most teams now are like that. They're not going to give up a first round pick. Not you think they should have the given up the first for Brandon Ayuk if they had a chance? Yeah, it's got to be somebody that's proven uh, to be really special. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Type. They needed, given the circumstances, yes. I think they should have because they needed a, him so in bad. In a way, Dave, yes. I, I, they needed him so bad. Because look how I don't bad think he was ever coming here. Him. To be honest, I think he was using the Steelers the whole time. I agree. As, as yeah, a, but 100. I don't think either one of them, Devontae Adams or no, Blake, one of them was. were ever coming to Pittsburgh. No, it comes I mean, goes back to my original point. Why would you come here? If you're in San Francisco. Yeah. You're going to come to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, it's my, like, my dude you're out of your mind. Cleats specifically made for him, ready. Yeah. the day the trade was done, like how's that happen? Because everybody knew. Because Aaron Rodgers is running the show there. It's not even like yep. a secret or a joke. I mean, the Jets reporter guy was on the fan the, yesterday talking about it, and he's like, "We all knew." He's like, you know, he's like, "Come on," he's like, "You got to be kidding me." He's like, it's it's not even a secret. He said, you know, they know he was behind the firing. They know that he was behind Devontae Adams coming. He said, you know, they're not even really trying to hide it very well. They just won't openly admit it. All right. So speaking of the Jets, let's go ahead and talk before we leave today about, you know, what this Jets game that's coming up this week. And now we've got Devontae Adams there with Aaron Rodgers in New York. And what does that look like? What is that impact of Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams up against this Steelers defense? Um, how do you see this game shaken out? We'll do we'll do predictions at the end. But what what matchups are you looking for? What are you excited about? What are you worried about? Um, I, I, I'll, I'll really, really quick. I, I have to give credit to Dave for actually fully watching the all 22 of Broderick Jones. Cause I went through and I did detailed grades and detailed notes. And I was telling some of you about it. 
It was one of the most disheartening things I have watched in football in a very long time. Just in the first, just to give you a really, really quick look at what you were talking about, Broderick Jones, on the first drive, we're all wondering why the Steelers can't have first drive success. You have grades of a C, D minus, C minus, C, C plus, F minus, D, and C for Broderick Jones on the first drive. How are you going to have success when that is your starter? So my worry is that having Broderick on the field right now isn't just a liability to the team. It's dangerous that there's going to be injuries, that something is going to happen for whatever reason. So automatically, my first concern that is if we're going to start Russell Wilson, was it looks like it's not going to be good. I can't I can't see it being a positive. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not just him, too. Dan Moore isn't exactly uh lighting the world on fire. I know everyone's been pr- giving him his praises, but you if you watch last week, too, he was he had his moments where he was pretty bad, too, against yeah, a good pass rusher. And, and the Jets have the fourth most sacks in the league. So you're going up against mm. that defense with th- these two tackles. And if it is that quarterback who's not mobile, yeah, that's a recipe for disaster for me. I, I, and Ryan McCullough, too, and, at center, like Dave brought up earlier. <sighs> That's probably the most scariest part. I'm, I'm not me, afraid of the other side. I, I don't know why. Uh, for me, the, the weird thing about this is that what we like to do and what they like to do is both teams' weaknesses against each other. They like to throw a lot. Mm. They they are 30th in running the ball. I don't know if you guys know that. And I couldn't believe it when yeah. I saw that. They're yeah, 30th right. running the ball. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. I was shocked to see that with Brees Hall. And uh, so – but, yeah, but we, Dave, like to, we like to run what, – what's that? The, Brees Hall is coming off his best game of the season, 104 yards, okay. first time all year. I get it, but still, they're not good overall per game running right. the ball. So, well, unless they just don't lean on it that much. And yeah, we're they, worse they, yeah. against the pass, and then it's the opposite. They're bad against the run, and that's what we want to do. This game is going to be decided on whether we get we, – we struggle against their passing game or they struggle against our run game. This is what's going to decide the game. Because if we're successful with the run game, we'll win. If they're successful with their thro- the throw, their passing game, we are going to lose. It depends on who's more successful in that department to me. Okay. We could have Alex Highsmith back. We'll need him. Huge, again, huge. Having time. him back. Huge. And, and, and one thing you really got to look at is, you know, they changed the play caller and all of a sudden Hall burst for 100 yards. And the Jets should be a running team. They have two very good running backs, yes. Brees Hall and, Bra- and Braylon Allen, and they have relied too much on Rodgers' arm. But I, the matchup I'm most concerned about, I'm concerned about the defense in general here because if you are going to be the highest paid defense in the NFL, this is the game you're supposed to come in and assert your authority and will. And, and I'm worried about it because you got two stud wide receivers on the outside. So let's say Dante Jackson and Joey Porter can hold their own. Let's say we can limit the running game. Beanie Bishop is going to be covering Alan Lazard, who has been <laughs> very, very good this season. I don't like that matchup. I'm I, I I do not like that at all. So this it's going to come down to TJ and Alex getting a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers to make sure he doesn't have time to go down the field. And let's face it, we have not played very well historically against Aaron Rodgers. Agreed. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I I'm hoping for disagree. Aaron Rodgers' ego to play a big part in this. I want him to say, I got Devontae Adams back. Let's force everything to Devontae. Let's make Dev- – I want him to make it so obvious because this isn't the younger Aaron Rodgers. I am – I know that we have to respect Aaron Rodgers' arm. We're not as good against the pass as it. I don't know if I should be worried that I'm not scared. I'm legitimately not afraid of Aaron Rodgers. I have waited for it. I have waited all week. I've waited since I knew we were playing the Jets to be afraid or even a little trepidatious about this. I think our defense should be licking its chops at the fact that they have Aaron Rodgers, where at his age and the fact that he seems to be pulling all the strings right now, he's probably going to try to do too much at some point if you make him. And I really like worried about the def- defense against. I'm very worried about our offense. But on the defensive side, I think I, I, I think this is where they're going to prove to Bob why they're that uh, that that highly paid one specifically against this team because Alan Lazard, all that 
I legitimately think Aaron Rodgers is going to look Devonte Adams first, second, and third, and then if anyone else is open, open them. Yeah, but Zach, you're forgetting about Garrett Wilson. Okay, yeah. Garrett Wilson. No, is, I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying Aaron Rodgers. He's will not going to start Aaron. ignoring his number one yeah. receiver because Devonte Adams showed up. I, that, that's my will, thing. I, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm banking. I'm hoping for the ego to take over. If smarts take over and it actually goes, I was supposed to, it'll be spread out to the weapons that he has. I'm hoping Aaron Rodgers sees that it worked what he wanted to happen. He got the coach out. He got the wide receiver he wants. And now I'm going to get that to the wide receiver that I just got. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It probably won't happen, but that's a, I'm hoping that's the Aaron Rodgers we get. The Jets are a good team. The defense has to play really, really well. And it's going to come down to Beanie Bishop and Aaron Allen Lazard. That's what I think. Let's do some predictions before we go. Dave, let's start with you. Go around the clock. Can I get a prediction for both quarterbacks? Are you the quarterback? <laughs> if, if Russell Wilson plays, and I'm going to go on the, the, the consensus that he is going to play, Yeah, I think the Jets win this game. I think the Steelers okay. really have struggled putting any points on the board. I think this could be like a 24-10 Jets. Wow. You want to give your Justin Fields prediction? Sure. I think if Justin Fields plays, 17-14 Steelers. Nice. God, I hope that's what happens. What about you, Zach? You don't have to get both. I'm just messing with Dave. Yeah, no, no. I know. I, 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 I don't think there's a world in which Fields starts this week. I would love it to, so I'm not going to really – even put my energy towards that. But I feel like we're going to win this game, but it's going to be a, what was it, the Monday night Cleveland Browns game last year where the defense pretty much took over and it didn't even matter that we had an offense on the field? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think it's going to be something like that where we'll win and I'll say 20 to 18, it's going to be really close. And the only reason, I fully trust our defense. (laughs) Maybe more than I should. I have a lot of faith in this defense to to do what they're supposed to. I, I really do. I might come out looking silly at the end of this, but I should have predicted the Steelers for a third straight week to get over 30 last week, and I didn't. So I'm going with my gut again, no matter what logic says. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, you're going to have McCollum out there facing Quentin Williams. You're going to have uh, Jones facing Quincy Williams, and you're going to have Sauce Gardner on Pickens with Russell Wilson in his first game coming off an injury. I, I think the Jets win this 17-13. I'm really torn. I don't feel like the defense is going to be able to to hold them down for four quarters. I do think there is the Jets factor. The Jets are the Jets are the Jets. I they If any team can ever figure out a way to screw something up, They'll do it. They'll be an inopportune fumble. There'll be a stupid penalty. Oh. And I think I think that's what we have to count on here. I think we w- I, I think we win uh, just a, in a ridiculous fashion. 1916 with Boz kicking a last second field goal after the Jets do something incredibly stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I have as a 2018 too. I, I thought something similar to Bob. I think that the, the Jets all season, even with Aaron Rodgers, are just chaotic and undisciplined. They're picking up tons of penalties. Look, I know the Steelers are too. So this could be one of those weird games where, you know, which way does the penalty clock swing, you know, as to as to who wins. I think we'll rely a lot on Boswell. The one thing I'll say that I keep thinking about is that when that, you know, look, this is a media person, so you're taking it with a grain of salt. But when the Jets reporter was on the radio yesterday, he was saying that that people don't recognize like how much chaos the firing of the coach has thrown into this franchise. Now you've got this guy that was supposed to be their coordinator stepping into this coaching role while he's still trying to do this other job and somebody else is helping him with the defensive coordinator. And he's just said it's created like a lot of chaos in there, you know, and he made it sound like Aaron Rodgers is kind of running things. So I'm hoping that that chaos does cause some trouble for them on the field and translates to some trouble on the field. And like Zach, I had him at 20 to 18. This won't be a high scoring game. Will not be a high scoring game. game. I think they're catching the Jets at a bad time. They're coming off their best offensive game. 
And now they got Devontae Adams. But they haven't you know, won in 150 games after they've lost to the Bills or something. So we have that yeah, on. That's a crazy say, stat. I'm, I'm going to be crazy really stat. happy if we all come back on Monday and we're just trying to figure out how on earth we won 41 to 3. I don't know. But we're going <laughs> to throw them out for Brian Backo if that happens. I can say that. Oh, man. Thank you show this far. We appreciate you. We'll be dropping our predictions on Twitter later, and you can let us know what your prediction is, what you think. You can make fun of us. You can tell us you agree with Zach and I, whatever you want to do. Uh, please follow us all on social media. Follow the podcast and the Steelers Sanctuary page as well. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast because it really does help the algorithm. We appreciate all of you that take the time to listen. We'll be back on Monday to hopefully do a victory celebration over this big win and talk about how well things went when Mike Tomlin was just psyching us all out and Justin Fields was back in the game. Just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave.